who has been the toughest player to score on in your NBA career? Toughest player to score on? Yep. Probably Drew. Okay. What makes it so tough Probably Drew. for you to score on Drew? Just good. Like, Drew got locks. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Drew, got, Drew got locks. Like, he got locks. He's strong as shit. He's quick. And, like, he loves to play defense. Like, that is the worst thing. Like, that is the worst trait that you can go up against somebody that loves, that he just loves to play defense. Like, um, and I, like, th- those are always the toughest matchups for me offensively when the guys are, like, super shorter than me. Uh, Has his brothers got defense like that? Uh-uh. Not as good as him. No. Like, Aaron Aaron plays good defense. Um, but it's not Justin close. plays good defense. Like, they're defenders. But Drew is just, yeah. it's another level. Like, yeah. He, he has, has anticipation. He that's, has that's the word. instincts. He has, uh, like, he knows your like tendencies. Like he's smart. Like he knows yeah, where you're going to put the ball. He's like, like a cerebral defender. So he's ready looking at the uh, player report for sure. And yeah, for sure. He, and he does. This, he just knows he does movement. That. Like he just knows yeah. what you want to do, and it's always at the right place at the right time. Plus, he has all those attributes. How many first team defense he's been on? Um, I'm not sure. I think he has a few though. He should. Could be wrong. Yeah, he's got to have at least one. For he's sure. he's been on all defensive teams for sure. For but, sure. Um, How many times you been on them? First team, five or six, right? All together, defensive teams. I think I've been on five, four okay. or five. Come on. So, Pete, when we're talking about defense, I want to know, in your opinion, is is that something that you're just naturally gifted with, like the ability to to be a good defensive player, or do you think that individuals can work their way to being an elite defensive player, or is it a mixture of both? I think it's a mixture of both because. I was I was a poor defender in high school. Like, yeah. I was an awful defender. Like, I used to we used to do this drill in high school where you had to guard like you had to you started off the offensive player started on the baseline. The defender started at the free throw line. Okay. And you had to throw the ball to the offensive player and you had to guard him full court. Yep. And I used to be so nervous about this drill because, like, <laughs> it used to be one move. <laughs> yeah. Throw it to them. They yeah. take off one way and they was gone. Like, so I used to hate this one specific drill. And I never was like, you know, I, I feel like I was a late bloomer into my body. So I didn't really figure out, like, how to move quite well yet. Um, so I wasn't I wasn't ever a good defender. Like, defense was never my strong suit. But what I did have was – the effort, like, I used to want, just because I love Kobe, I used to want to make it tough for you to score. Like, regardless, any any way I could, I'm going to give extra effort, extra slap down, extra jump. Like, I'm going to try hard as hell to, like, make it tough for you to score, regardless that I wasn't good at it. Um, and I think what clicked with me was I was good with anticipation because in high school we would play a press, and I was the front of the press. And that you have to be good at, yeah, <laughs> anticipating, like, is it going to be a bounce pass? Like, are they trying to throw it over? And so I think that's where I got really good at anticipating passes and reading passing lanes. And, and I was really good off the ball, not good on the ball. And uh, so I think that helped. And then when I got to the NBA, it was just, like, the only way to get on the court was to play defense. And I think that's just where it hit for me and it clicked to hone in on the defensive end. So I, I like to answer your question, I don't think you necessarily like there's God given abilities you're born with that helps. But I, I think you can always become a better defender, even if you're not good at it, because uh-huh. it's angles, right? Yeah. Like defense is angles, playing angles, knowing angles, knowing tendencies um, and then just having effort like to, to play on the defensive end. Yeah. I had a coach in high school because I didn't like to play defense. His name was Dean Bradshaw, and he specialized in defense. Mm -hmm. And I got a couple questions, but one thing that he told me when I was younger that all you kids out there should should listen to is he basically told me if you want to play at the next level – uh, you have to be able to guard a guard. Mm-hmm. If you can't guard a guard, like you're you're useless. Mm-hmm. But he was so detailed on teaching us 
all the different angles. And just like what you said, defense is obviously anticipation, God-gifted athleticism, but it's literally just angles, mm -hmm. like knowing what angle to take, seeing space on the floor. How many times in the NBA has someone sat with you and you worked on your defensive angles? Does that happen? That, I feel like that, it doesn't. That's not often in today's game. Like it's sad. that that's not often in today's game. Like they don't cover you don't cover defense as much as you used to. Like my first couple years in Indiana, we covered defense every day. Like that was number one priority was defense. Um we would literally go over it and practice and shoot around like extensive work to become a better defend defending team. And then it gave you confidence that when you get on the court, like everyone knew what coverage we're going to, like where are we sending this, what shots we're going to give up. Um, and like that's just, it, it doesn't happen as often, I think, in the NBA now. Um, the focus is more so how to score, how to get good opportunities, good looks, um, and be efficient offensively, I think. That's that's what the focal point is in, in today's NBA. I think I'm going to start an Instagram called Lethal Defender. Mm. <laughs> mm. Lethal Defender. I, like I can it. teach defense. You think I'm so? a good defender. Yeah. I'm locking. I'm yeah, locking. Yeah, lock, I'm mean, locking him boy, up. Yeah. Uh, named elite, lethal shoot. What's yeah, the name? Lethal, lethal, lethal shooter. Lethal, lethal, lethal defender. But people need it. Like because that's you don't see anyone teaching people how to play defense. Yeah. Nobody. And it's, it's, they doing it. Just ain't seeing it. No. It's it's honestly it's it's so simple. Like I I think defense. Learning and teaching defense is so simple. It just comes down to effort. You know what I mean? Like, it comes down to effort. We, like, in Indiana, we didn't have guys necessarily great at defense when they first got there or, or after they left. Like, they, there wasn't, like, guys that would come that was, like, known for defense. But, like, when you put in the system of mm – -hmm. And you hit it over the head every day. Like, this is how we're going to defend. This is how we guard. You know, we're doing drills. We would break it down so much. Like, we would do rebounding drills. We would do the straight up. Like, we would practice the straight up of verticality at the basket. That's like, dope. That was a drill we would do like, on, a, on a consistent basis. How to not foul. And, like, everybody would do it. George Hill, Lance Stevenson, Roy Hibbert, David West. You do it a lot now. I would. Like, that. that's just been You're, instilled in me. Just go straight up, <laughs> like, and you would, you would, and it's, it's, it's like, it's tough for people to finish when you get that contact and you're expecting a call and there's no call. Uh huh. It it throws you off. Um. So like, it yeah, it was it was uh, my indie days. Like we were special because we worked on it so much. And it's true. Everybody Maybe had it's that not defense. the rule changes. Maybe it's just people. No one practices defense anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard to. It's it's hard to because like. A lot of wear and tear. It's it's more wear. It's is more it, it wear. It's, is, it's for sure more wear and tear like you because you, you need charges. actual physical bodies yeah. to practice defense. Like we're doing box out drills back then. Like <laughs> actually hitting each other. Like no bullshit. We was actually Dan Lance hitting coming each other. in for a rebound. Like ah oh. yeah, and you you <laughs> yeah. you. But it built toughness. It built character. It built like if we can do that to each other, can't wait to play the other team. You know what I mean? Like, we can't wait to go against and, and put this physicality on the other team. Because we were doing it against each other so much, like we couldn't wait to play other teams, and it was easy when we played other teams because we drilled it and we went over it so much, and it was so much tougher in practice because you're doing it constantly, over and over and over. When you get in the games, it's like, oh, this shit easy. Like they don't play as hard as we play. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're gonna run them out the gym because they don't play as hard as we play. Look, the NBA season is in full swing and Prize Picks has got you covered when it comes to helping you make some money. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app where you can select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and turn $25 into two. 50, baby. Prize Picks is easy and really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds, Dallas. So make sure you guys visit prizepicks.com slash podcast P and use our promo code podcast P for a first deposit match up to $100. And you already know what time it is. Cha-ching!